what wonderful music to greet us and bring us in today. Uh, and uh, shall we join together in our call to worship, Surely the Presence. And if you can stand and feel comfortable, that would be great. In the midst of God's children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many. It can be just two or three. And I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt oft times before. Surely I can say I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Take that nice, refreshing, and renewing breath in. We release in the comfort of knowing that surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. As we've joined together this morning, we have come here for a divine and intentful reason. With this sacred yes, I encourage you to give yourself that pat on the back, that warm hug of self-appreciation because that is honoring your steps, each and every step on the path that we take in this journey of life. So as we join together, we join in energy, we join in our thought vibration, and we join our hearts, planting seeds of renewal, of new life, new love, new eyes, new vision to see with. And for this and all of the gifts that we are incredibly, inherently blessed with, we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. Good morning. Effective Friday at 11 a.m., I retired and resigned from the Board of Trustees. And Jerry and I will no longer be regularly attending the Church of Unity of Joplin. Jerry and I have found that in order to address issues of health, which are serious, family, and home, we have reached a decision to retire. We will continue to perform through Easter Sunday, which will be our last day at Unity. I want to be clear that we continue to support our excellent spiritual leader, Rachel Willis Barnes. Our decision is purely for personal reasons. We have loved performing music and serving unity. And we're grateful to our church family for your kindness and support. We urge you all to honor our final wish, which is to rise above all conflict and division and unite together as unity of Joplin is reborn into a brilliant future. 
best wishes to you all in the name of our way shore, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will do a much uh, bigger space of honoring Gary and both Gary and Jerry, but I would like to give you a blessing and to give our deep heartfelt appreciation, our gratitude to you. So in unity, we have a typical blessing. Would you please join me in blessing Gary now? Gary, we love you. We bless you. We truly appreciate you. We behold the Christ that you are expressing. Well, I love, so loved. We you appreciate your service in many, many ways. And as we begin the day, um, we'd like to welcome everyone that's here and uh, know that um, we're all in this together. Amen. And uh, it is is um, we're grateful that you're here, whether in person or online. And um, as we join uh, together, this is so, uh, we're going to have our congregational song. So if you feel comfortable doing that, please stand. It's for the beauty of the earth. everyone to kind of join as we welcome our celebration team today. Um, we have Michelle Grieb and I am Susie Back and of course we have uh, Jerry, Gary, and Rob leading our music today and on electronics we have Mike and Caden and our wonderful spiritual leader uh, Rachel Barnes will be doing the lesson and meditation. So join me now in our statement of faith. There is only one presence and one power active in the universe. And in my life, God the good, omnipotent. And our mission statement. Our mission is to inspire Encourage and affirm divine freedom within each other. And we have added our building affirmation. So join me in that. That unity of Joplin is what our welcome. We okay, work, works for all. And we're moving forward in this transition time um, with a great um, spirit. 
and it is our um, affirmation that the next, join me, owners of a building are ready to purchase in this now moment. We are ready to move. And so today, um, our inspiration of the day will be by Aubrey Bishop. Good morning. Today is Palm Sunday, and that is the word for the day. The affirmation, the Christ within protects and clears my way. Together, the Christ within protects and clears my way. As I enter Holy Week, I reflect on Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and how the multitudes greeted him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Like so many, I have used the sacred time of Lent to cleanse my soul of beliefs and habits that no longer serve me. I have felt blessed as I have opened my heart to the healing, cleansing waters of spirit. Now I feel ready to welcome a greater awareness of the Christ within me. Every part of me quivers with eager anticipation. The world seems fresh, and I feel newly alive. I behold the Christ in me and in all others. With joy, I celebrate. With gratitude, I humbly bless the Christ in me and in everyone. And the scripture is from Matthew 21, 9. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Today is Palm Sunday. Thank you. And always on Palm Sunday, I remember that uh, sometimes we would have the youth come up with palms, and there was a phrase that we would use called Hosanna and blessings. And that's what we're kind of moving into now, our sacred exchange. And so um, there are many ways that we can give. And uh, you can see some of those um, just by clicking donate or um, reading on the um, above. Give to 833-368-0897. And of course, there are older people, oh, maybe I shouldn't date myself, um, that still use uh, snail mail. So join together as we say our prosperity blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive, and I am grateful. Yes, and let us join together in excitement for our magic penny. So we know that we are joyful about these, and let us do our dedication of these ties and offerings 
are dedicated to the will and work of the unity of Joplin for the highest good of all. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to invite everyone to take a nice deep breath in through your nose and feel that cool air moving in. That coolness, that newness, and we release all that hot air. We do it in a gentle, quiet way of letting that hot air go as we dissipate memories of conversations, of worries, some concerns, we let those fall to the side. As we center ourselves with that centering breath. Within that breath, we feel the movement of spirit as life moving through our bodies and out as vibrational pulses into the universe. So in this sacred time together today, we bring our attention into this quiet space, this sacred space known only between you and the spirit of your being. We allow a barrier of love and protection to surround us. As we've moved through the season of Lent, working to release and let go of any aspect, any belief, any thought pattern, habit that we have fallen into, we let it go intentionally for 40 days leading us here, leading us home. As we sit with our focus and attention in our home, in our body temple, we allow truth thoughts in as they knock on the door for recognition you are loved you are supported you are a compassionate caring and kind human you are empowered with divine discernment in the thoughts that you hold and the words that we speak. In the life, the love and the wisdom that fills our cup, we allow divine order to unfold in front of us regardless of the outpicturing, knowing and trusting. Because as we've released the doubts and the fear, we've made room for trust each step of the way. So in our sacred time of silence today, we open our mind 
to whatever spirit is bringing to us, whether we hear our guidance, whether we feel it or see it. In this divine moment of silence, I invite you to open up to the next steps, listening and feeling the guidance. So we listen to the tones from the prayer bowl. They surround us in this cascading light that is but another realm of divine space that shows light onto the next steps. Trusting with our faith. On the silence. As we gently bring our awareness back into this time and space, we remember the gift that we've just received, knowing that as we move into the silence, that is a space to receive. So just take a moment to hold on to this gift that we have received. To breathe into that, to allow it to move into the cells of our physical being to serve as a reminder of our next steps and the divine support and guidance that comes with each and every move that we make. For this higher awareness, for this space, we breathe in, thank you. We breathe out, spirit. Thank you. Spirit. And as we send this gratitude out into the universe, knowing that it has no option but to return to us.
and bless all those around us. We say thank you, Spirit, for this divine time together. And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen. Hey guys, I was about to do something from the 90s, maybe a little space jam. Woo, 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 woo. Right, yeah, some people, you're feeling me over here. Myers family's got me. All right. <sighs> Welcome. And probably for the f maybe the last time, good morning. <laughs> Not the last time for me, but for the morning. <sighs> and thank you for joining us here on Palm Sunday. Now, everybody remember, uh, next week is Easter. If you know any kids, bring, your, bring them along. If you know any families, encourage them to come. We're going to have a big old Easter egg hunt. Friends of Unity has worked their bottoms off, stuffing eggs full of candy, and we have more than enough. So if you're watching online, come and join us in person. It will be fantastic. So I want to start with our affirmation for today. The Christ within protects and clears my way. Let's say that together. The Christ within protects and clears my way. And this has been that season of Lent where we invite spirit to move within us that we use our co-creative powers and sometimes co-destructive to destroy and dissipate some of these old things that are no longer serving us. We talked about that throughout the month. But 
today. If you have been loved in this past month, you must be feeling something. Something ought to be shifting. Some ice should be thawing. Some cracking should be displaying in your life as we have released. Because sometimes those things want to hold on. It's habit. I talk to Myrtle often about habits. Habits, thank goodness, are a blessing that we can change. And negative thought patterns. If we want to lighten the load a little bit off of our personal shoulders, we take them and we acknowledge that they are personal habits that can and will be shifted. You have to be feeling something different. Hearing, hearing things differently. Feeling something different. Knowing that something is indeed transforming right now. And that is what makes the scriptures and these stories of Palm Sunday, when we hear of Jesus coming in. Two years ago, I remember speaking about this on Palm Sunday, and he rode in on none other than a donkey, not a big white stallion, right? And we need to remember those pieces. Now, as someone who has grown up in unity, I love getting that a physical interpretation. And I love imagining myself in that time and in that space. What would it be like to be in the crowd of people so excited to see this new king coming into the town? Holy moly, I can only imagine how wonderful that would feel. My, my best imagery of this, and those of you who are around children have probably seen the, the live-action Aladdin. Anyone? Yes, right? Make way for Prince Ali. Okay, so I'm imagining instead of Prince Ali, we've got Jesus riding in. And you know those crowds? They are ecstatic to see him. In the movie, they don't really know who he is. But in this story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem... I imagine this, this jubilation being of the same intensity and, and power. So today, let's take another look at the story. And this is from Luke. It's a 12th chapter. And it says that the festival goers heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem and that they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. And then fast forward, just five days later, and we see Jesus according to that same area of scripture, saying from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. So, time out. I'm from inner, inner, inner city, Springfield. I don't know how familiar people are with that, but... Um, we knew which roads to go up and which roads not to go, you know. And in my mind, I'm thinking, Father, forgive them, because they don't know what they are messing with here, okay? No, it's just my own little, little interpretation there. The people stood by, and they watched, and the rulers, meanwhile, they glared at him. They did not feel this jubilation whatsoever. They glared at him. And they stated, he saved others, let him save himself. This right here probably felt like one of those things that we call these days a cosmic two by four. Whack! Right? I would imagine this. 
the critics said, if he is the chosen one, the Messiah of God, then within one week's time, one week, Jesus went from being that triumphant, celebrated king entering into Jerusalem to being betrayed, arrested, denied, beaten, ridiculed, scorned, crucified, and stripped of his clothing. As one minister put it, like a Honda up on cinder blocks, stripped of his wheels and his catalytic converter. So come on now. What on earth happened? What happened? And moreover, why? Why would I ever want to follow that path? Right? We're being real here. Why would I want to follow that path? Why would I want that to be my journey? The sermon this morning speaks of the trials and the tribulations that Jesus faces along his journey to glory and to ascension that never ends. It also speaks to the journey that we walk with Jesus. Who is walking with Jesus? Amen. Yes. However that shows up for us, however that feels to us, we can't escape it. We can make a choice to try and ignore it, but we cannot escape this. Now, for those of you that are on that journey with Jesus, you may have discovered some slight similarities between your journey and Jesus' journey in your life, like Jesus in the wilderness. You may have fasted and prayed only to be tempted and teased, like Jesus. You learned and you leaned into love, and this is what we've been practicing this last month, is learning and we lean into love but sometimes it feels like we've done so only to be tried and tested like Jesus just as we are bringing ourselves into that state of peace with our releases and making room for truth. That word, Jerusalem, when we look it up in one of my favorite textbooks, it literally means habitation of peace. Jerusalem, the habitation of peace. So just as you have set the intention to release and enter into that space, that state of peace, a seeming breakdown can occur from time to time, right? Maybe not just one breakdown. It might be multiple breakdowns. Oh, boy. Like the technology in my office this week. (laughs) It might be several breakdowns. (laughs) But like Jesus, it might not feel like it's just mercury in retrograde. It may feel as if the entire universe is in retrograde. And we're saying, what is going on? And in one super fancy, thank you, Charles Fillmore, word, we have chemicalization. We have 40 days and 40 nights worth of releasing and bringing new thought in with the intention of planting that new thought, nourishing it, so it replaces all of the space that those old thought patterns took up. Now, like I said, chemicalization is a fancy word that we use in unity circles, and it describes the crazy, chaotic experiences that one often has prior to transformation. And in the story between Jesus' triumph and entry into Jerusalem on what we now call Palm Sunday and his agonizing crucifixion on Good Friday are events that seem to be completely in opposition to the love and light Jesus brings. 
but perhaps the definition of chemicalization as we see it in the revealing word can also add some light to what's actually happening in these moments within us and around us. And I'm just going to say, sometimes when I am moving through this experience, I just want to go and hit the reset button. Maybe, oh, I'm going to go back over here, go back to bed, and I'm going to wake up and hope nothing has changed. Is it still safe? Okay, going back to bed. I want to take a closer look at this definition and explain what's happening to not only one person in the room, I'm sure there are many of us, and I'm going to put myself in this boat too, because we're all in this boat together. (sighs) The light and understanding of this process helps us continuing riding strong with Jesus. Now, chemicalization, a condition in the mind where all material sources coming from the mind manifest into reality. The things that we think about are the things that we bring about, right? Who's heard this one? Yes, it's very popular, right? What we resist persists. Are we in that boat ever? Mm -hmm. I'm probably not the only one because I'm not the only human here. And it's a hard pill to swallow. But hear me out. It is a condition in the mind that is brought about by the conflict that takes place. And here is the best part. When a high spiritual realization, and I want to say remembrance, yes, it contacts an old set or habit of error thinking within that state of consciousness. It is coming in full force with this energy that has all of the power to dissipate what has been there. But within this shift, something has to work its way out. So we want to be graceful with ourselves, compassionate with ourselves, Whenever a new spiritual idea like Jesus and the Christ expression is introduced into the mind, some negative belief is going to be disturbed. It will resist, and with this resistance comes more or less commotion in the consciousness. I loved when I heard this phrase. Someone shared it with me recently. Commotion in the consciousness. Can you say that with me? commotion in the consciousness when we may be feeling unsure and we're like well i need to judge you 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 and you because something doesn't feel right inside of me we are having a moment of commotion in the consciousness because what do we learn in elementary school about pointing fingers when you point you got three pointing right back at you right we learn this very early on And it's okay. It's okay to have the commotion in the consciousness because it means that we are doing our personal work. And yes, I am smiling because yes, I know that each and every one of us is inherently powerful enough to stand on our faith, to let go, and to relieve a space within ourselves. Now we see in the story the crowd saying, Hosanna on Sunday and crucify him by Friday. And in between that, we can see what it doesn't say in Scripture. But what it does say is that there are the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin and other individuals in the story that don't like what they see. They don't like that new spiritual realization or remembrance, right? Remembering that divine spiritual idea that is being introduced as king, ruler of our thought kingdom. 
or queendom. Scripture says that while this is going on, and the crowd is having exaltation and praise for the king that has been brought forth to them on Palm Sunday. So now we introduce a crowd. We've got a king here. We've got this Jesus thought being introduced into our consciousness. And we are introducing an all-powerful king or queendom, a ruler over our thought patterns or subdivisions or, you know, tiny house communities. There were people who not only didn't like what they were seeing, because that would be putting it very mildly, they began to plan to kill off Jesus. And in Ju- not June, in John, Lazarus is also included in this plan. There is always that entity. There's always that vibration. There's always that tradition that the Pharisees represent. So when we look at the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and the Revealing Word, when we look at Pharisees, they represent tradition. And they represent that status quo that does not like to be disturbed. Just keep things the way they are and I won't have to hurt you. Anybody know anything about that? Anybody? Right? Yeah. (sighs) Don't mess with my cheese, and I will let you live is another way to put it. (laughs) Don't come in here with new ideas, changing stuff that had been happening like this for thousands of years. We are just fine. Don't you dare introduce something on my watch and interpret and interrupt my sacred cows. And to that I say, moo. So don't you dare come in here with that love and that light, Jesus, and put my existence, oh man, into danger. Don't touch the status quo or the tradition. Because even if and when we see the start, we start seeing this as the way to go, to allow that love and that light to come in and move us, shift us, shake us up from the inside out. When we start seeing this as the way to love and when we start seeing this as the way to light and when we start knowing What is going to replace what we've been doing all along? We find ourselves asking, is there a spot for me? So you might be doing and seeing a little bit of this in your life. Now, I do not imagine anyone will be crucified. But we're going to take this down to our level so that we can feel and see ourselves in this story this year today. That struggle between the new and the status quo, the struggle between the way it has always been and the way it could be is going back and forth in this innate and eternal tug of war within us. It's an inside job. It doesn't mean that it doesn't have out picturings, but the work is done on the inside. In our being, it manifests in our affairs, so what we are active in doing. But this is where it begins. So how do we deal with that without being crucified, right? How do we deal with it without being denied and arrested? How do we deal with that without being harmed? Well, here's how. Every person, place, thing, situation, circumstance that we see in these stories is actually something that is going on inside of us. It is an element, an element of soul's unfoldment. 
And so take it that way. That's our giving compassion and allowing that space for this shift to take place. If there is no enemy within, then the enemy without can do us no harm. Now, who got a little bit out of our Eye of the Storm book study? Who is feeling a little bit confident? I'm a, I'm a super whole lot confident in this, that no one and nothing is against me. I'm going to raise my hand because I am full of faith in this statement that no one and nothing is against me. Stare me straight in the eyes, say my name, say whatever you need to say. It's not about me. In the four agreements, do not take it personally, Right? Within, so without. Let there be peace on earth. And where does it begin? Yes, with me. It begins with me. So let's begin with us. Number one, don't be swayed by the crowd of thoughts in your mind, right? We have all of these thoughts and cheering. And once again, I go back to this, imagining this huge crowd in the movie Aladdin. Woo, that's a lot of crowded thoughts in here right? And some of us have been called overthinkers, and then some of us have just been called really prepared. We got a lot going on up here. But don't be swayed by that crowd that wants to bring in the power and replace the king. This is your journey, and the crowds that we see in the story are representative of the thoughts that we have in mind, the multitude of thoughts. You don't just have one thought, Sometimes I think maybe my daughter has that going on, but I know it's not the truth. We always have so many of them. It would be easy if we did. But the other thoughts are still there, and we can be crowded sometimes with those thoughts. The crowd in this story, it represents that chaotic mood, right? It's a chaotic mood swing of collective there with you one day and against you the next but from a deeper place take that crowd out of the picture and that crowd that is outside of you can stay there because your own thoughts can become your supportive crowd that cheers you on take your predominant thought that you want to have manifest, you want to make, come into the physical reality of our space. And that divine idea, that spiritual realization has come to you. I see it done already. So we take that thought, we hold on to it, we don't let ourselves be crowded. We be crystal clear, crystal clear on what it is that we are doing and why we are doing it. Just as our way shower, Jesus didn't play to the crowd. He did his thing, but he was very crystal clear of what he had come here to do, and he knew what was his to do and he was willing to see it through. As painful, physically and emotionally, that it was going to be. Don't worry about the crowds of thoughts, just hold on. If it's just one single truth idea today, hold on to it. Number two, raise your palm. Raise your palm in strength. Because we know that we have the strength here. We're waving these palms. We have the strength now to hold on to this thought that we choose. Nobody else chooses it for us. We choose it being divinely guided. Now this holy week, not about what happens to you, it's about what happens through you. 
Something wonderful is happening here. Something magnificent is unfolding. Do not be afraid. For in a few days, the crucifixion, it's not about your soul. It's about clearing out. They can't break your soul. It's about the mortal things that are falling away. It's all falling away from each and every one of you. And it's about those things that no longer have a place in our life because our lives are transforming. We're going to see this in our life, in our world, in our affairs. We are going to see it showing up in our body, in our being, in our heart, in our mind, and in our soul. We will see it as we choose a new thought pattern to reign over the crowd. Because there is a resurrection that means that there must be a crossing out, a crucifixion. Now we talk about that resurrection, but I love the word ascension. With ascension, it's one thing to rise up, but it is another thing to rise up and keep rising. And who would like to rise up and keep rising? Oh, amen, Mary. I see you, girl. All right. So as we are in this space, this commotion of consciousness, take that one with you. Write it down. Use it. Let people know where you are. I'm having some, commu com some commotion in the consciousness. It's because I'm doing my work. We're in a process of transformation, and we are in the process of chemicalization. It's this purifying process that is taking you to a place so that you can be prepared. Oh, my heart is so happy for each of you that are doing this work. You can be prepared for your personal best and your personal highest for yourself and for your family and your loved ones that is coming forth through your unfolding, for your fulfillment as a spiritual being and a spiritual universe governed by spiritual laws active and expressing in the beautiful bodies that we express through. So, this week, take hold of those straggling thoughts and let them know that a new king or a new queen has moved in. They are no longer residents. Bless you. the service. <laughs> so, pardon me. I want to give a huge shout out real quick. I know we're about to go over time. We didn't have a platformer. Miss Susie stepped in and I'm so thankful, so thankful, so thankful to her because sometimes, exactly, yes, thank you. Yes, that is the energy we need. The energy we need. Yes. Major praise. Anywhere that she is needed, she steps up and says, I am here to serve. Thank you. Well, next week, please join us. If you're watching online, please join us in person. I am so happy to see all these beautiful faces here. Yay, thank you for being here. Please come back next week. We are going to have our Easter service, and we will have our Easter egg hunt after the service. Also, Please remember, if you know families that do not have a church home, invite them. Invite them to come and hear a message where they know they have power. We have an opening for the, a Sunday school teacher. Now, this would be the elementary school ages. So if you are interested in working with that age group, uh, please do contact us. You can uh, contest contact us via Facebook, our website, or call the church, because if somebody's not in the office, you'll get me. <sighs> we are still accepting donations for our food pantry. So if you would like to bring those by, we do have our outdoor pantry, and we thank you. Our neighborhood thanks you. We have given 
and we know the laws of prosperity. If we give, we so shall receive. Yes, yes. We don't have a slide up here, but we do have our Friends of Unity that meets every Wednesday from 1 to 3. And after the Easter project, I'm sure they're going to be discussing what they would like to do next. We appreciate their service so, so incredibly much. We have prayer support, both through our email, or I mean our website, dating myself, through our website, so go to unityofjoplin.org slash prayer, and you can put in your prayer request, you can call the office, and also if you're here in person, we do have prayer chaplains, so if you'll gently raise your hand if you're a prayer chaplain serving today, you can share your great news, you can share your not-so-great news, you can share your requests with our prayer chaplains, and we are so thankful for your service, prayer chaplains. It has come time for the children's blessing. (laughs) All right, please stay with me, our children's blessing. Children, you are a perfect child of God, and God and I love you just the way you are. Thank you so much for joining us here on YouTube to check out our videos. I hope that you enjoyed the message that you heard today. Hopefully it planted some seeds for exploration. If you liked the video, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe to our channel so that you get notifications every time we have a new video uploaded. Have a wonderful day and know that you are loved.